Joining me now is Illinois Congressman Mike Quigley, a Democratic member of the House Appropriations and Intelligence Committees. Welcome, my friend. Do you agree? Did McCarthy remove the Democrats because Republicans don't want to listen to differing views on committees? Is it that? Is it political payback? Is it both? It's both, but let me put it this way. Um, Adam Schiff is probably their worst enemy, not because he stood up to President Trump, but because he was so good at it. Mm. Uh, I watched it in the ring for eight years. They don't have anybody who can compete with him with legal acumen, leadership, messaging. Uh, and and I, I, I know the reasons they want to knock him off keep changing, but the bottom line is he was so effective. If you can't, if you can't beat him, uh, take him off the playing field. Hmm. Uh, Eric Swalwell, particularly effective. Uh, so they come up with some issues that, uh, hey, if they really had issues dealing with Eric Swalwell, uh, the current president at that time, uh, President Trump hated him so much, he would have used it. So if you can't beat him, knock him off. And, and that's difficult. And here's why it's even more important. I can't think of a committee beyond the Intelligence Committee that matters most to have experience and institutional memory. The world is a very dangerous place. Do you really want to knock off people who have been there before? So interesting, your assessment, Swalwell and Schiff, both of them so effective, and, and Schiff in particular always seemed calm, cool, and collected. I remember whatever was being thrown at him. It, it, I, I see your point there. Uh, let's talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene, who supported McCarthy, now on the Homeland Security and Oversight Committees. Paul Gosar, by the way, a McCarthy holdout, on the House Oversight and National Resources, National Resources Committees. Now, that's on top of a number of McCarthy holdouts, and they've all landed on some key committees. What does this tell you, particularly seeing Green and Gosar on oversight? Yeah, I had a particularly dark moment looking at Ms. Green's appointment where I said, you know, this will afford her the opportunity to really investigate those space lasers causing <laughs> fires in California. I mean, seriously, though, I think Speaker Pelosi had it right. We can have philosophical differences and they can get intense. But there were there was a line crossed here where they posted threats to other members, both Miss Gr Miss uh, Green and Gosar that there ought to be in our rules passed every two years. So this isn't the subject of debate. If you go there, if you incite violence, uh, against anyone, especially other members, you're not, you're going to be censored and you're going to be knocked off committees. So everyone knows the rules are the same and we don't have this silly back and mm. forth issues. Yeah, clearly you're echoing the sentiments of Nancy Pelosi right there. Uh, let's go to many Republicans who um, say they're not going to vote to increase the debt ceiling unless there are spending cuts. But the White House says, yeah, that's a non-starter. How worried are you about both sides now digging in their heels at this point can and how will this impasse be negotiated in time? I'm concerned more than I have been in 14 years in Congress because mm -hmm. of the potential Faustian bargains that the speaker made with them, that he would take this to its extreme. And, and, and I know there is a more reasonable middle ground, I guess, Reagan era Republicans who don't want to go there with something like this. And, and who better to quote than Reagan when he talked about not raising the debt ceiling? He said the full consequences of a default or even the serious prospect of a default by the U.S. is impossible to predict and awesome to contemplate. Listen to President Reagan if you don't want to listen to us. Hey, and if you want to talk about uh, addressing the debt and the deficit, let's remember President Trump had the third largest increase because of his irresponsible tax cuts. If you want to talk about a responsible way to address this, President Obama put in place uh, the Simpson-Bowles Commission in 2010 that had big, balanced, bipartisan, thoughtful, constructive ways to deal with this, not short-term quick hits with the sword of Damocles hanging over us. Mm. This yeah. has to be handled responsibly. In terms of the way this all can be um, attacked or approached, if you will, first of all, you have the demand for budget cuts. It's coming from the hardline Republicans. Do they not understand what default could mean for the economy, how it could eventually affect their own constituents? I mean, does this once again come down to just who's going to blink first? Or 
Is there some kind of an avenue for the debt limit and spending cuts to be treated as separate issues? I think long term, we uh, Congress hasn't shown, especially my colleagues across the aisle, that they're responsible enough to address this. So I, I think long term, you've got to look at flipping the law or unless Congress acts, uh, the, the there is no debt ceiling. Uh, that doesn't mean we're irresponsible because we have to come to terms with this, but not in a short term haphazard fashion like they're talking about right now. Hmm. You want to talk about this, there's a way to do it, just not in this manner. Here's something that uh, is of concern. The U.S. Coast Guard, as you know, has been monitoring a Russian vessel. It is believed to be an intelligence gathering ship. It sits off the coast of Hawaii. The appearance of a Russian surveillance ship along the U.S. mainland coastline, that's not so unusual, but Hawaii? And in, in this context, because given Russia's veiled threats to use nuclear weapons, does this increase any concern for you? I think, look, again, this sort of thing has happened. There was a, a similar ship off the southeastern coast of the United States in 2019 acting in a very dangerous fashion. My biggest concern right now is the fact that tensions are so high. Hmm. All right? It harkens back to the Cuban Missile Crisis, where Kennedy was concerned, justifiably, that someone might misread a situation, that uh, some sort of accident can take place. And that can trigger a, a much higher risk and an escalation that's that's not necessary. So I think right now that's the danger with something like this. Clearly, the Russians understand that. I understand, you know, look, where's the Pacific fleet? There are rush the reasons that Russians would imagine they need to be there. Uh, but it's all the more reason to get our committee structure in place and have committees like my own intelligence committee operating with matters like this being so serious. Yeah. All right. Illinois Congressman Mike Quigley, my friend, good to see you. Thank you so much.